Boom, 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 Hey, yo, homies, poets, and po, I don't know, not et, whatever. Um, yeah, hey, boom, I'm Thundercloud here at the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame, as you can read behind me. Washing away the garbage, leaving rainbows after rain, yes. It's Chillin' Tuesday on the 22nd of October. Let's have some fun and linguistic games. Golf, perhaps. A game of golf? Anyone for golf? No. How about the Poets on the Mountain Festival? It's coming up. November, yes. The 15th, 16th and 17th of November, we've got the Poets on the Mountain Festival here in Gyra, which is featuring things like the Australian Poetry Film Contest and Film Festival, the Australian Comedy Poetry Competition. It's featuring the Poetry Workshop Series. Yes, the Poetry Workshop Series... Um, is a series of workshops on the 15th of November, which is a Friday, and um, they go all day. There's writing rhyme, there's write and publish a book of your own poetry, how to get practical ideas of to get the creative juices flowing, humorous writing, and also a poetry performance workshop. That's one of my specialties is performance. And, um, yeah, that's, so that's the... 15th of November. So get your tickets, um, get them online and you'll see the link in the description or just go to the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame.com.au website, click on events and you'll see it there. Tickets, get your tickets there. But tonight's special poetry special is a golf special because I've been invited down to the Gyra Bolo and Recreation Club to do a poetry presentation to a bunch of veteran golfers who've been in town for a, a golfing tournament. And um, they thought, well, let's invite Thundercloud and maybe he can do a bit of poetry to entertain us and give him his dinner. So, yes, I'm literally singing for my supper tonight, uh, but that doesn't matter. Um, that's good. It's all publicity to me. So, um, yeah, and um, to promote poets is all I really care about. Poets, poetry, nurture poets, um, celebrate old poets, new poets, write poetry, help other people write poetry. Poetry, 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 collect poetry, celebrate. Uh, I already said that. Anyway, poetry is my thing. Mm, my passion is true. You wouldn't find, oh, well, there are other people passionate about poetry, of course. Right. Now, what's uh, Chill and Tuesday? It's the 22nd of the October, and um, the weather today in Gyro, what was the weather? It was, a, it was a scorcher. It reached up to 23 degrees, I think. And, um, and it's now currently around about 20 degrees outside, so it's still pretty warm out there uh, today. Uh, during the weekend, it's going to get overnight down to 4 degrees, I think, on Saturday, but, and up to 18 on Saturday. So it's still going to be fairly decent for Gyra, um, but not as warm as everywhere else. So anyway, if you want to know your weather, look it up. All right. Now, I suppose I better get on with the poetry because that's what Chillin' Tuesday is about. And, I, and I'm doing, a, as I said, a, a presentation of poetry to the golfers tonight. And I thought, well, how, how can, who does poetry about golf? Uh, there's a few there online. Well, Banjo Patterson wrote one and it's called The Wreck of the Golfer. And this is it. It was the Bondi golfing man drove off from the golf house tee, and he had taken his little daughter to bearing company. Oh, father, why do you swing the club and flourish it such a lot? You watch it fly over the fences high, and he tried with a brassy shot. Oh, father, why did you hit the fence just there where the brambles twine? And the father, he answered, ne'er a word, but he got on the green in nine. Oh, Father, hark from behind those trees, what dismal yells arrive. Tis a man I ween on the second green, and I've landed him with my drive. Oh, Father, why does the poor Chinese fall down on his knees and cry? He taketh me for his excellency, and he thinks, once hit, twice shy. So on they fared to the water hole, and he drove with a lot of dash, but his balls full soon in the dread lagoon, fell down with a woeful splash. Oh, father, why do you beat the sand till it flies like the carded wool? And the father, he answered ne'er a word, for his heart was much too full. <clears throat> oh, father, why are they shouting for? 
and screaming so lustily. But the father, he answered never a word. A pallid corpse was he. For a well-swung drive to the back of his head had landed and laid him low. Lord, save us all from a fate like this when next to the links we go. Hmm, yeah. So then there were a lot of, uh, not a lot, but there were some golf poems, you know, about how lovely it is to be out on the green, you know, swinging and teeing off and blah, blah, blah. And um, I'm like, oh, yeah, well, gosh, I'm not going to do that. Um, but I did find some limericks about golf. And I don't know who wrote these, so please don't ask me. Two golf, three golf, two other golf limerick anyway. Two poets named Helga and Rolf found no words that would rhyme with Adolf. One said it's observed, I don't, there is not a word. Let's give up and go play some golf. Yeah. I'm a lonely golf ball lost in the wood hit by a golfer that's not very good. Honestly, I swear, I don't think he cares. Maybe taking a few lessons he should. Fritz had always dreamed of owning some land. After the army, he'd buy some as planned. But Fritz served near Iran and green grass there was banned. Fool bought a golf course, but he only bought the sand. Hmm, I know, right? Silly boy. Now, Melting in the Rain is the next one, or the tale of the unlucky golfer. You see, many years ago, in the year, my father was, uh, for a short time, a real estate salesman, and he was working on a land release called MacArthur Park, which was later renamed North Budrum or something like that. And um, anyway, at the time, it was after this song had been around called MacArthur Park about a cake that was left out in the rain. And the words of the song went, MacArthur Park is melting in the dark. There's something about that cake. It's sort of something flowing down, I don't know. Um, melting in the rain. Anyway, um, but... So then this was inspired by like, well, I need to write something funny for these poet, for these um, golfers tonight. And what kind of things happen on the golf course? Our, um, oh, yeah, you could get hit by lightning. I am thundercloud after all. Hmm, okay. So the tale of the unlucky golfer or melting in the rain. He struck and swung. And struck and struck until in rage he screamed, Rah! No, it's not what you think. I'm going to start again, all right. He struck and struck and swung and struck until in rage he screamed, I'm stuck in this sand trap. I'm going to snap. The lightning struck and it went zap. His wife that morning tried to warn him, you can't play golf, it will be storming. But just nine holes, his mind was fixed. This can happen to golf addicts. Late afternoon at MacArthur Park, storm clouds growing disturbingly dark. His first drive went 300 yards. His first three holes, six under par. His fourth and fifth two holes in one, storm clouds covered the setting sun. At the sixth hole, things went to miss. He got to the sand trap in six. The ball went up and just rolled back in. Hit nine, ten, eleven, and a ten. The storm let loose, the lightning went crack. The unlucky golfer was left laying on his back, barely alive in a bunker in a lot of pain, in the dark at MacArthur Park Golf Course, melting in the rain. Yes, I know, poor fella, hey? Mm. 
Look, you know you've still got two weeks to get your films in for the Australian Poetry Film Contest and the Australian Poetry Film Festival. Yeah, check it out on filmfreeway.com slash Australian Poetry Film Contest. Yes, there are late entries still available, so you could get your poetry film in to the Australian Poetry Film Competition. Yes, well, imagine that. Now, the lady that came and asked me to do the poetry down at the bolo tonight for the golfers, she said, oh, yeah, I remember, like, I came here one day and you did this one about your jumper that you shrunk. Oh, yeah, okay. And um, I did too, and I put it on and oh, I couldn't get out. It was too small. Cold wash only. I wish I'd read it before. Now I have a woolen jumper that's a size four. Threw in my jumper with the colours and the whites washed in hot water and now it's not quite right. Cold wash, wash only. Lay flat to dry. So I gave it a hot wash and hung it up high. And my woolen jumper is now very small. It wouldn't even warm one testicle. When I washed my jumper, I wish that I had thrunk, shrunk. I wish that I had thunk. Because my jumper is now tiny and it has shrunk. And I have a jumper that's hugging my skin, which I can't get out of, and I just got in. I wish I had read it because I'm out of luck. I am stuck inside my jumper. Help! I'm stuck! Yeah. Now, as well as the poets on the Mountain Festival here in Gyra, we have the trout festival in the beginning of October and at the trout festival we often have a poet's breakfast and it's you know tall fishing stories that kind of poetry so this was one I wrote a couple of years ago for that called smells like sardines a man went fishing and threw his line out and when he pulled it in he caught a rainbow trout so he threw his line back in and he made a wish. Oh, I wish that I could catch a really, really big fish. He pulled his line in and he caught a sardine, like no sardine had ever been seen, but not 10 centimetres, but three whole metres of world record sardine and a very big eater. Yes, it was huge. Mm. All right. And, um, yeah, well, speaking of fishing and fishing poles, um, you know, even our, our wives can get addicted to, you know, golf or maybe fishing or something like that. Um, this is called The Golfing Wife. It is not a true story. <coughs> My wife is Helga and she loves playing golf. And I love playing it with her. Hi, my name is Rolf. But Helga is addicted to golf and golf's in her dreams. If we don't play twice a week, she gets cranky, mean and screams. My wife is a golfing addict and just the other night she was dreaming playing golf and I awoke up with such a fright she was standing on the bed and she had me by the wood teeing off to hit my balls. It wasn't me doing me any good. She was a golf club high and snapped a hole in one. My left ball threw in, flew into my mouth, was trapped. Well, I managed to get away to the hospital to see the doc. He reattached my lost golf ball and he put a steel rod in my broken cock. Helga and I now sleep in different beds, although she's given up golf. She's now addicted to fly fishing with the steel fishing pole of Rolf. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Poor old Rolf. Mm. Um, he's got a steel rod inserted, um, but at least it's always hard and if he decides he can always I don't know get his iron out now many years ago I was sitting in Nimbin and we'll keep it on a sports 
topic tonight and I was sitting in Nimbin and having a coffee early one morning and a fellow called Pete, who's a surfer, talk, come up and he started telling me about the surf he'd just had. He'd been to Ballina. So he went inside, went to the chemist to get what he needed and then came out and I'd written this, so I read it to him. Pete the surfer. 14, 16, 28, 44 in his head. Oh, I've had a great day, Pete the surfer said. I went down to Ballina. No one could get out. Even the jet ski driver wouldn't tow me out. The surf was too big, four metres or more. It was messy and swirly. No one could leave shore. So I walked out the rock wall and dived in the rip and it took me out back on a roundabout trip. I was surfing alone, a pinprick from the shore, and I got some big rippers, one five metres for sure. I was out in the big waves, I was surfing alone, it was bliss. I'm so happy the wind wasn't blowing. It was glassy and smooth and I got in a tube and it took me back 20 years to when I was a juvenile. I don't know what they'll say at the hospital tomorrow, Pete said. They've been working two years to fix this stuff. Well, I couldn't give a shit, I'll enjoy my life too. I'll sleep well tonight, you know I'm 72. But age doesn't matter. It's great to be alive, said Pete the surfer. I only feel 25. Mm. The great fella, Pete, and I do really hope that Pete the surfer is still alive. I haven't seen him for five years since I've been living up here in Gyra at the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame. So, yeah, big up and blessings to Pete out there. All right, Froggy Flat. Now, this one was written in 2020. No, it wasn't actually. I think it was written about 2022. It was written specifically for the Oracles of the Bush, uh, Bush Poetry Yarn Telling Festival up there in Tenterfield, which this year was the last year of the Oracles of the Bush after 25 or 28 years, something, a long time anyway. So very sad that all these festivals are ending. Um, the Highland Vibe, the last one, Oracles of the Bush this year, many festivals. So what I do encourage people is to get out, go to festivals, go to events, get off your phone, stop watching short videos and like find some events and buy some tickets and go and see them. Because when you go out and you meet people, it's really interesting. Yeah, it is. And we've got to make life interesting because otherwise we'll just get caught up in repetitive habitual loops of watching, scrolling through repetitive short videos. And we don't want that to happen now, do we? Hey? All right, Froggy Flat. This was written many years ago. Well, two. A peaceful place is Froggy Flat, and my story is funny, about a man named Phil McColl who fell headfirst in the dunny. It was a dark and lonely night, and this is not a joke. As Phil walked to the toilet, the dunny made a croak. Well, he turned his phone torch on and opened up the door, and as he walked inside, the dunny croaked once more. And the dunny crept on croaking in the middle of the night, and he shone his torch about to find everything all right. It was a long drop compost toilet with not a pleasant smell and as he opened up the lid he tripped and his phone fell. It was dark inside the dunny but he knew his phone was right. He had landed on the sawdust and Phil could see the light. He went back to his kitchen and he got a pair of tongs. His feet were cold and so he put on a pair of thongs. In the dark he couldn't see. The thongs belonged to his wife. They were much too small and the cause of the coming strife. His wife awoke to an empty bed and also needed to pee. In the dark, she donned Phil's songs because she couldn't see. In Froggy Flat, the dunnies far down the garden path. In Phil's big thongs, Mrs. McColl slipped and fell flat on the grass. Phil was headfirst in the toilet. He was leaning in, reaching for his phone when Mrs. McColl burst in saw her thongs on Phil and she began to yell and in surprise Phil lost his grip and that is when he fell head first in the dunny, landed on his phone, wiped it off and that's when he found he wasn't alone. There inside the dunny was a giant green tree frog staring him in the face and croaking on a log. Mrs Mac looked down the hole and asked, what can I do? I'm busting for a pee and I really need to poo. I've got a turtle head and it's starting to poke out. Call the yes, yes, you stupid woman, Phil began to shout. Mrs Mac got angry, pulled up a nighty and had a sit. 
She let it rip and film got covered in more of it. She went back to the kitchen and made a cup of tea. She called the SES and all Phil's mates to come around and see. Well, they had to dig him out as Phil was firmly stuck with a pump and excavator and the local sewage truck. That afternoon, Phil was freed. He gave a happy shout. He'd been stuck in it for 14 hours before they dug him out. A peaceful place is Froggy Flat, but you won't find Phil McColl. The locals now refer to Phil McColl as Phil Me Hole. Yeah, they do. Now, the last one I've got for you tonight is one that I did write in 2020. Actually, I've got two more for you, actually. This is called Tinga Billy. It's written in 2020. It was written specifically to celebrate the town of Tinga, which is about 70 kilometres that way. And I thought, oh, well, let's see if we can write and integrate Tinga into a poem, which I did. Tinga Billy was a farmer and he planted trees along his creeks and gullies and he pulled out weeds. As a lad, Billy's dad sent him off to school. He studied every day as Tinker. Billy was no fool. When he graduated ag college, he went home with a plan to lend a hand to his dad to regenerate the land. He planted fields of native yam between the forest stands, finger lime and gumby gumby. Tinker Billy's plan was grand. Tinker Billy carried water from the creek to grow the trees. Summer sun had scorched the earth and brought drought and disease. A plague of feral pigs led by the monster boar ripped up seedlings by their roots and dug the forest floor. The yams were gone, the limes were trampled, Gumby Gumby too. Tinker Billy knew what he, Billy had to do. Tinker Billy he ran home and got his gun. He said, come on, Dad, the pigs are here. Let's go have some fun. The pigs bolted through the pumpkin field as he pulled up in his truck. Billy told his dad, I'm going to fix this muck. He lifted up his rifle and took a careful aim. Little did Tinker Billy know of his approaching fame. The monster boar charged as Pinger, Tinker Billy pulled the trigger. The rifle didn't fire and the boar grew bigger and bigger. He jumped up on the ute and he grabbed a rope. Tinker Billy knew it was his only hope. He leapt and threw his rope and he caught the mighty boar. Two hundred kilos of wild boar gave a mighty boar. He leapt upon its back, the boar took it in its stride, bolted off with Tinker Billy through the countryside. Through the scrub it bolted, but Tinker Billy had a grip. The mighty boar took Billy on a mighty bush bash trip. Tinker Billy's only hope was to wear that boar down. His grip grew tight as a mighty boar headed into town. Through Darby's Creek, Death Diamond Street, then Opal into Ruby Street. He'd still be going next week if Arnie Dodd hadn't heard him shriek. Rode fast past the Winging Long Museum. A busload of tourists cheered to see him. Went viral on a Facebook and COVID Zoom stream. Made the whole world laugh and hysterically scream. Tinker Billy was about to shoot to fame as Arnie Dot raised a rifle and took a careful aim, squeezed the trigger and shot that mighty boar in the Khyber Pass. In Guyra Road, the boar slowed but didn't die fast. Tinker Billy almost got halfway to Gilgai before the mighty boar finally collapsed to die. It jumped off the road to avoid a truck into Bluebeard's Gully where it finally got stuck. Well, this was Tinker Billy's very lucky day. He got down from the boar and yelled, yippee i I got a monster boar for dinner. And when things look dire, I look down and find this monster sapphire. When things look dire, I landed in a ditch. I'll have roast pork for dinner and this sapphire makes me rich. And that's the story of how Tinker Billy shot to fame when he rode a monster boar 10 k's and staked a mining claim. Hmm, good old Tinker Billy. Here we go. And this is the last one. This is a Gyra love poem for the evening for Chillin' Tuesday on this beautiful day, the 22nd of October, 2024. A Gyra love poem. A Gyra's the place where mountains hold sway. Nature's beauty unfolds each and every day. Rolling hills whisper, secrets untold. Water birds sing stories as wings unfold. A community warm with a welcoming hand, friendships embrace like the golden wattle's hand. History whispers of bush rangers bold, art's vibrant hues, tales silently unfold. Fresh from the fields, flavours burst on the tongue, potatoes, tomatoes and poetry sung. Festivals abound, laughter floats on the breeze, 
blue sky and fresh air, hearts at perfect ease. So come, wander free, let your spirit unwind. In Gyra's embrace, peace and solace you'll find. From sun-kissed dawn to starlit night's gleam, this highland town, a soul's perfect dream. Yeah, and that's Gyra, a love poem. And Gyra is an awesome place. It's beautiful. You've got the, everything in that poem that's there. Yeah. So, yeah, the Poets on the Mountain Festival, 15th, 16th and 17th of November. Get in and get up here. Book your tickets. Book your, um, get everything. Get your accommodation booked and all. That's it because you'll only get one chance this year. And the workshop's on the 15th of uh, November as well. Hey, I'm Thundercloud. That's it for Chillin' Tuesday. I've got to go and get dressed and get ready for uh, the, the, golfing, the golfing poetry presentation. Yeah. So I'm out of here. I will see you tomorrow night for Wednesday Words happening every Wednesday here from the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame in Gora. I'm Thundercloud. Mum calls me James, washing away the garbage, leaving rainbows after rain. See you later. Boom. Don't forget to like, subscribe and... You know, hit that like button. See you later.